In noting that our two valve mains shortwave receiver is one of the most watched videos on our YouTube channel, we felt it might be of interest to show a similar project that actually featured in Practical Wireless magazine in July 2016. Here's the actual cover, showing our very small self-contained two battery valve shortwave portable. As you can see, in keeping with so many other Practical Wireless projects, it needed a name, hence it was from then onwards called the Heritage 2. As it could be difficult sourcing several of the components required to make this unit today, we made a point in trying to identify alternative items for the RF choke and the in-stage transformer in particular. Whilst I did supply the publishers with a full set of drawings for the chassis sizes etc, I can appreciate they didn't have sufficient room to fit them all into this project. I'm therefore including all three of the A4 sheets submitted to the publishers at the conclusion of this video for anyone who'd like to take screenshots of them as I imagine that somebody out there might just have the urge to try and make one of these units themselves. And here we have it, just like the picture in Practical Wireless, this is the Heritage 2. The only difference with this is the fact that I've managed to put a couple of little markings on the knobs and identifying the 41 and 49 meter bands. So aside from that, it's exactly the same. What we'll do now is have a quick look inside Yes, there are screws that normally hold that on, but uh, I've done those already. Somehow we managed to shoehorn everything in place. As you can see, it's a bit of a squeeze, although they're not too many components really at the end of the day. There's the two PP3s on top of each other, giving us that 18 volts for the HT. There's actually a rechargeable battery in there, that's the LT. The two 1T4s for the valves. Reaction control and tuning control. There's one, one resistor here. Um, the two inductors we have here, you can see the orange of, of that one in there. Here's a, a pulse transformer, actually with a relatively low DC resistance, but um, it worked fine. I tried several different sorts and there was no real discernible difference with this circuit using a proper um, you know, high frequency choke, uh, such you know, a, a traditional one. So I found that worked fine, so he's in there to stay. Likewise, the interstage transformer. This one here is an ETAL one, and there's a ratio of 3 to 1, and the ratio of 3 to 1 is about the same as what you'd normally expect for this sort of circuit, and once again it works fine. I did exchange it for a proper 3 to 1 interstage valve one, which is almost as big as this half of this box, and there was no discernible difference again. So there you go, that's, that's what I, I would suggest for construction. And underneath, but you can't see it underneath here, is the ferrite aerial which has the three coils on it. Trying a different camera angle, we can just see it right buried down in here is the ferrite aerial. There's a couple of little capacitors in here as well. So really it is a, a case of squeezing it all in. These um, B7G valve holders are actually glued in, um, which takes a little less space. Um, other than that, there's not a lot inside here. Um, let's have a listen to it and see what it sounds like. I usually use a crystal ear piece with it and it's fine. It works really well with, with just this. But what we obviously done today is I've connected up a small amplifier on the back of the well it's one of two earpiece sockets. So you can listen two people can listen at once. Um and that's it. What we had to do is have a quick listen to the 41 meter band. There's not very much on 49 at the moment. So we turn it on and we'll see what we can pick up. So reminder this is the this is the reaction control and obviously if you go too far you end up with a the expected uh, whistling And I think that's about all there is down there. Obviously, um, 40 meter band, the amateur band is just here. Because sometimes we can pick up some things on it, but I don't think there's very much tonight. It squawks away, but you have to have it on the point of oscillation, so that the single side band signal doesn't need a BFO because we're oscillating basically. 
but there's nothing really we're picking up at the moment. So there you go. I think it's quite a respectable performance for what it is with its very low HT. Thanks for watching.